Now we'll move forward for the next panel, which is how does the creator economy open up new avenues for female creators? As we all know that the creator economy that refers to the growing industry of influencers and content creators that I myself is, has now opened up new avenues for female creators to showcase their talents, build their own brands and generate income as well, which is a good thing. Now let's move forward to discuss on how with the rise of the creator economy, women now have the opportunity to to create and distribute their very own content, build their own audiences and monetize their talents as well. To discuss on this and to get answers to all my questions, we have Ms. Anisha Dixit, who herself is a content creator. Please welcome on the dais, Ms. Anisha Dixit. Please put your hands together for the lady in red, Ms. Anisha Dixit. We have Ms. Mike Melly, co-founder and CRO of Ms. Malini Entertainment and Good Creator Company as well. Mike Melly, Mr. Mike Melly, please welcome. Will be done well. We have Ms. Nikita Sahota, Vice President of Brand Solutions, only much louder. Please welcome the gorgeous woman out here, Nikita Sahota. We have Ms. Purti Chaturvedi, Digital Specialist, Collective Artist Network. Please welcome Purti. Rubina Singh is with us right now, Country Manager India and Mena, Any Mind Group that is, Miss Rubina Singh. Okay, she's on her way, so she'll join us in a short while. And we have to take this. She's there? Okay. I thought wo hota hai na, wo hero, heroine aa jati hai. Ek dam se hai. Yes, I'm here. So yes, she's on her way and joining us in a short while. And to take this session forward, the moderator, of course, the session chair, I would like to invite Ms. Aparna Achrekar. Please put your hands together for the co-founder of KOTO, Ms. Aparna Achrekar. Lady in red, uh, may I request everyone for a quick introduction? Uh, it'll be nice to know a little bit of your backgrounds. Of course, she's given us uh, some brief, but let's start with uh, the lady who filled the energy with the room with a lot of energy. Okay. Uh, hi, guys. I already spoke earlier. What's up, guys? Can we see a high five? Hey, what's up from everybody in here, all the awardees and all the amazing women in here? Can we just have a big cheer? What's up? <laughs> yes. Okay. This was not very loud. And can we have one more? How are you guys? Good? Okay, good. This was sort of better. Okay, guys, so my name is Anisha Dixit. I'm a content creator. Um, I make comedy videos. I'm an actress and a social media influencer. And I've been actually in the industry for almost 10 years, guys. So I've been making content for 10 years. This year's going to be 10 years. So that's me. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Mike Melly here, uh, co-founder, chief revenue officer of Miss Malini, and now of Good Creator Co. Uh, I've been in the industry for 13 years, and I've known the amazing women on both sides of me for almost that entire time. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to the chat. Hey, everyone. It's awesome to be here, and it's great to be with all of my colleagues, actually. Um, and I work at OML. Uh, for those who don't know OML, um, where the people who started the first music festival in India with N87, we started off by managing a lot of music artists in the space. And then when stand-up comedy was a niche, we started managing a bunch of stand-up comedians. And today we manage over 85 uh, creators across genres. So that's what I do. I head the talent division in the revenue department. And I'm happy to be here. Hi everyone, I'm Purti Chaturvedi. I lead, um, I lead business at um, the new division that Collective has just launched, uh, which will be announced soon, so can't speak about it yet. Uh, <laughs> tell us, tell us, come on Purti. Soon, soon, we'll, we'll, uh, everyone will know soon, but um, I've been a part of Collective Artist Network for about um, eight and a half, nine years. Um, I've been leading influencer marketing business for the last four of those years, and um, Glad to be here and speak to everyone and share our views on creator economy and how it supports women. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. How many of you in this room think they're creators? How many of you think you're creators? Somebody lift your hand. No creators? No? Yeah. Come okay, on. Yeah. Yes. One, two, three, four. That's Come it. On. Just, just, just four of you, five of you? 
we need more women where we are of course women? have we of course have the famed riksha wali here you all know her as riksha wali she is by the way anisha dikshit but yeah, yeah. actually I but riksha wali yeah i forgot saying so previously people knew me as riksha wali uh, i used to do a lot of funny things to foreigners back in the days uh, but now i make funny things for everybody <laughs> so that's what i do now the multitasking mommy is here Rubina, can you introduce yourself to the group? Happy to thank you and um, apologies for being late. Like Aparna said, yeah, the multitasking mommy is here. Uh, what I'm most proud about is to be a mother of a 10-year-old. Um, otherwise, professionally, I'm a digital marketer. I'm the country manager of uh, Any Mind, which is a end-to-end um, -end commerce enablement platform. Uh, why I'm most proud to be uh, the mother of a 10-year-old girl is because when I see her grow up with confidence um, and, as, you know, uh, looking at the world as an equal place for women, if not more privileged for women, gives me a lot of joy. Thank you so much, Rubina. So, well, there were only four or five here who said they were creators, right? But do we know how many creators exist in India? There are 80 million of them as of 2022. The organized influencer marketing sector, right? And I know this group likes data and there's, you know, Rubina sitting next to me who's always crunching data. So I'm going to throw some data to impress the, the audience here. The organized influencer marketing sector is set to reach 3,000 crores in FY24. The revenue share of micro-influencers will rise from 9% to 14%. And that's huge, right? Uh, just a while back, we were discussing what's the share of celebrities and what, you know, what share does uh, the rest of the influencer ecosystem take away. It's all set to rise. The payouts to influencers from brand campaigns are growing, as are the lengths of brand campaigns. Clearly, the Indian creator economy is maturing very, very well. So really, what avenues does this open up for women creators, right? We are, the, we are the audience here that's celebrating the best women disruptors in this country. What really does this creator economy mean for women? Nikita, let's start uh, with you. How do you think the creator economy has opened up for women? You know, you've been around for a while and you've seen various stages of this. What's your perspective? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I've seen creator economy develop right from doing your standard branded content pieces where brands didn't really know where to put their money, right? So they didn't really know how to calculate ROI, how much should I be paying for a creator? And once they started getting the gist of it and started collecting data, there were more avenues in which they preferred spending. So for example, instead of doing your traditional branded content pieces, we are trying to figure out what are the additional revenue streams for creators. So whether that means models like affiliate marketing, right? There are companies like Nika which allow you to create content on your own and not be dependent on them to give you a brief. You promote their products as and when and you get a cut of it. What this does is also gives autonomy to creators to be able to take control of the kind of content they want to put out and also get a piece of the pie. Um, we also want to create brands that resonate with the creators where they have their own name stamped to a company. They build it the way they want. Or we're doing um, equity partnerships or doing deals where um, even if they don't have a stake in the company, they're at least bringing revenue from it and there's a revenue share model. Um, we want to make sure especially women creators are getting more and more confident to be able to create and build businesses on their own. And our goal is to be able to give them a backing and a safety net for that. True, I mean, you've seen the entire economy evolve in very different ways, right? From just the usual brand sponsorships to so many different avenues. Purti, the pandemic changed uh, so much, right? With the phone and the internet almost being accessible to everyone. Are you now seeing a change post-pandemic days? Is there a decline? Is there an increase? And what are the sort of changes you've seen? As you rightly said, um, you know, pandemic saw a lot of content creation as well as consumption on mobile devices. Um, we saw 
we saw um, you know brands finally taking a note of this is the this is the discussion we were having outside before the panel started um, earlier influencer marketing was all about uh, celebrities and the bigger content creators there was a massive shift to um, the the long tail of influencers at brand as brand marketers like say uh, we saw a lot of micro, nano influencers coming up and uh, creating content. Um, so brands started actually finally seeing influencer marketing as a different function within marketing as a, uh, and not just a subset of it or a subset of digital marketing. There were spends that were uh, parked for influencer marketing um, during the pandemic. Um, so uh, yeah, a lot of that happened during the pandemic. Of course, what we're seeing post pandemic, and that's what I think um, we're seeing for the last year or so, there's a lot of consolidation that's happening. There's a lot of learning that the brands got out of doing these um, influencer campaigns. Um, we are seeing brands focus more on measurability. We are seeing brands being more uh, focused on ROI versus uh, it's not uh, spray and pray anymore. They want to uh, actually see what works and invest more heavily into that. Um, what we are also seeing more uh, over and above that is brands wanting to, um, uh, brands focusing more on reaching out to their audience and then identifying who the right influencers are that are reaching out to their audience. It's not the other way around anymore. It's not okay, I want to work with an XYZ influencer and let's see whether they reach out to my TG. They identify, I want to reach out to um, 18 plus 24, uh, 18 to 24 females, uh, top 10 cities and then identifying, okay, these are the influencers that work uh, for my brand. Got it, got so, it. So yeah. yeah, thank you. I guess we have a very interactive audience this evening. They just don't like to interact with us. Hello. Excuse me guys. Girls, since you have the mic, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, since done. you have the mic, let me ask you the next question and maybe something that the women in this room will relate to. Do you think as a woman creator uh, in this entire ecosystem, right? Brands and, you know, we, we heard Nikita and Purti tell us so much from the brand side, from the advertiser side. Did you have any unique experiences as a woman creator that you think you wouldn't have had if you were a male creator? Let me start the gender topic, right? That always interests everyone. I mean, 100%, right? I think, um, A, to, of course, since the pandemic, there's a lot more brands, a lot more money, a lot of people want to spend, right? And at the same time, there's a lot of brands that are very women-centric, right? Like, I'll talk about sanitary pads. I'll talk, I mean, honestly, every brand is also women-centric now, but specifically just for women, there's a lot more out there. Like, I get a lot of brands that only come to me to advertise for women because my target audience are women. Of course, men, 50-50 I have, but a lot of, that's how I started. So, for me specifically, I see how amazingly the entire ecosystem has grown. And, I, see, I, I'm a creator since 10 years now almost, so back in the days, there was nothing, right? There were no brands. Um, even though we had audiences, there was just no brands because you had to convince them that guys, our our videos, they have audiences. But at that time, people didn't understand oh, what is this digital space. But now, of course, 10 years later, and thanks to the pandemic, there are so many brands who were forced to come online, right? And now they see, of course, the benefit also for them. So I'll definitely say that it has grown exponentially for both men and women, and women as well. And I think the more female creators are coming online, na, the more brand friendly also, uh, it's, it's better for women to get more brands and it's better just for the economy in general. So personally, I feel for women, it's the best time, but I encourage whoever those four women were who lifted their hands for creators, yes, the first one right there, please create content, we need more women now. The more women come, there's the more brands for women will come, that's how naturally it will work. Absolutely, and everyone who did not raise their hands uh, kind of lied to us because we see them all on Instagram all the time. Every time you post on any social media platform, you're a creator, right? By definition, then uh, you're kind of that. So while we may not have contributed to that 80 million number I spoke about, but we do, we are creators in some form. So Mike, and um, don't you think Mike makes this panel inclusive, right? Yeah. Thank you, Mike, for uh, being here with us uh, today. 
Mike, you're the kind of you're kind of the OG, right? You worked on the Miss Malini uh, brand. The man behind the OG. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kind of. Yeah. What was it like building the Miss Malini brand, and what insights um, of women, right, of women audiences, did you draw upon to build a brand like that? Yeah. I guess before there was 80 million, I like to say there was one. So I, I think we have seen really the whole evolution, and I've been alongside. Seen Anisha for her entire journey as well. I don't think we went out trying to specifically solve something for women. I think we were trying to just offer good quality content. Uh, through the nature of that content, first with Bollywood, then fashion, beauty, yes, our audiences became more female centric, but if they had not, we still, I think, would have done the same thing of listening to the audience and just trying to understand where the gaps were, what was missing. Uh, just, just like you heard before, when we were out there pitching 10 years ago, I mean, it was, it was 1%, 2% of budgets were maybe going to digital. Uh, and most of that, 90% of that was going to Google and Facebook. So I think the insight, the foundational insight was if we can prove that we're listening to the consumers, to the audience, and we can prove that we know something about them, that we can cater to their interests, that we can get them to do more than something than just a two second thumb scroll, but to engage with content, to interact, to make it a two way conversation. I think that's kind of what set it all off. And then, then it's just about scale and being able to uh, address more audiences and more markets, more languages, et cetera. But at the heart of it, I think it was trying to really put the audience first and throw it out to the universe and hope that the marketers would, uh, would eventually see that. Uh, but it was a leap of faith. I mean, the, the first, if I, Miss Malini, we started 2010. So the first two, three years, it was, it was you know, very quiet. But, uh, but, you know, you build and you build, and, and I think the rest of the industry and the larger ecosystem is now caught up. So what we're seeing today is this booming creator ecosystem, I think most of us on the panel here say, yeah, we knew this was coming. We've been building towards it. We're now we're happy that it's reached the place that it is now. Thank you, the show sure, Mike. Uh, Rubina, how do you think the understanding of audiences, right, and generally more data-driven content creation, has that helped creators grow? How do you see them using data to further their content creation or increase their reach? I think uh, creators today are super smart. See, first they're young, uh, they're very nimble, they understand this digital world much better than people like me who started in the old world and then let started learning digital 10 years ago, uh, right? And I'll give you an anecdote which really tells, uh, rather than talking about numbers, uh, you know, there was a client pitch that we went to, large uh, FMCG company uh, had like this audience about 100 people in the room, all their brand managers, product managers, etc. Uh, I walked up on stage, gave my presentation, and people heard it, and yeah, it was all right. And uh, to partner with me, I had called a content creator to join me on stage. And before the meeting, you know, we were like uh, hanging out outside, and uh, the CMO who had invited me was like, are you sure he'll be able to like talk? He seems really nervous and all of that. And uh, I was like, uh, yeah, let's see how it goes, right? I mean, uh, let's figure it out. And I tried to give him a little bit of confidence. But I have to tell you that uh, when this person came on stage, you know, uh, and the story is true. So, you know, before the meeting, I had coached him a lot. And I said, you must cover these points and blah, 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 blah. So he'd actually written the points on his hand because he didn't want to, like, goof up. It was his big, large meeting to a lot of marketeers. And when he went on stage, he was a different person completely. He forgot about the points that I was trying to coach him and he had written on his hand. He started off by looking at it and narrating those. But then when he started telling his own story and insights about how uh, he started as a content creator, uh, the kind of content he was doing. So he started off uh, you know, with entertainment. Then within entertainment, he realized humor started getting him more um, sort of engagement with his audience. He pivoted to that. Then he realized that when it was family and local language, it gave him even more 
you know, engagement, and he pivoted to that. So I think content creators today are super smart. Uh, they use the, both their left and right side of their brains and try to make the most of it. Yeah, true, true. Nikita, on that, don't let me come uh, uh, to you. We're we are increasingly hearing of this term called the creator middle class, right? The bunch of creators who are not really aspiring to always be the mega influencers, but are looking at sustainable income coming from this. They are more like the nine to fivers, the regular office goers who do this for regular income. And we see this evolving a lot. How do you see this as a trend and what do you think it really implies? I would actually flip that a little bit. Um, I'll give you an example. So for everyone, I'm assuming, knows Sumoki Suresh, right? It's not like she has one million followers or anything like that. She has about 200K on Instagram, which is not considered as major or macro or anything like that. Um, she always wanted to tell stories that are extremely authentic to her. Um, she wanted to tell stories that represent women. She wanted to express her story. Um, for those of you who watched Pushpavali on Amazon, that's something that she thought you know, reflects her, and that's what she created. Uh, when we realized her potential in terms of being a writer, we started pitching her to a lot of producers and directors, but not many projects would get picked up because the stories were about flawed women or women's stories that you don't get to hear that much. Um, so, you know, we decided to take a gamble and said, listen, we'll fund you, we'll do whatever it needs to we'll give you the backing. You start your own company because we had believed that these kind of stories need to be heard, right? And today she has her own company called Motormouth where two scripts are already into filming and two have already been sold where we didn't need to fund her. It was because of her talent and because of her de dedication that she didn't have to go down the path of being an influencer and getting brand deals and run behind the numbers. And she always says, you know, she says this to other creators as well. It's just an idea. You just have to go for it. Once you start putting things into motion and it's something that you want to do, no niche is too, too small of a space that you can't basically become the bacha of, right? So um, if that's something you want to do, I think even as agencies and marketeers, I, like that's something that I always discuss with my peers as well. If you have faith in your artist, um, you should really give it your all, uh, you know, and take that bet onto yourself. So we've done that with a few artists and that has always worked and I, Hope we do more of it. Um, Rikshawali, Anisha, when you changed your name from Rikshawali to Anisha, right? And uh, I think you broke the hearts of too many. But of course, we love your name, uh, Anisha, too. Was it like a huge brand risk you took? Because would many creators want to do that? You had already created a big brand with that name. So honestly, uh, it was a heartbreak for me. Um, and I was thinking a lot about it before, right? I'll be very honest with you. See, the thing is, um, it was a big risk I was taking. It could have gone great, which it is, thankfully. <laughs> or could have gone not great. Um, but thankfully, it did go great. But I think, you know, when I took that decision, it was something that was on a personal level, to be honest, because I always felt Rikshawali is great, and I still love the name. Um, and I still love, you know, my rickshaw. I had a rickshaw in my home, so it was a huge other emotional thing I had to it. But I think, you know, for me personally, I had decided ki as much as I like the name, people weren't able to connect to me on a personal level. Because they always thought that rickshaw wali is a character, is something else. It's not me. And then lot of, then I actually had, you know, made the decision ki chalo abhi karte, because too many, I used to get so many DMs as well, that who's Rikshawali, we want to know who are you, is, is that a character, is that you, then eventually I'm like ki nahi I, I will change my name, I think it was right before the pandemic, I did that, um, and uh, I thankfully had a great support system with all of my creator friends, like Pratak, Tabhavan, Ashish, everybody posted about it, which was great of course, so that the transition wasn't so bad, that people are like, Anisha, who is Anisha? Ah, Riksha Wali is now Anisha Dikshit. Okay, got it. So it, it helped me, of course, but it was a big risk, I'll tell you honestly. But even now, when I walk on the streets or wherever I go, people still say, Riksha Wali. <laughs> they still say that. So I always call myself Anisha Dikshit, previously known as Riksha Wali. That will always be a part of me. And that is what made me who I am today. So honestly, it's still there, but still I go with Anisha Dikshit. 
previously known as Rikshawali. That's how it is. So do the Bombay auto rickshaw guys uh, never refuse your fare? You know, I still have that discussion a lot. I have, uh, um, you know, many times I go to the rickshawalas and I'm like, guys, come on, I've supported your community. Now support me. <laughs> <laughs> so sadly, yeah, I, I have been talking. I've been trying to like, make, make space for them in the, uh, in, this, in the area. But no, they still reject me sometimes. Although I have a lot of rickshawala numbers in my phone. So I call <laughs> them up <laughs> in case. But yeah, um, I hope once one day I'll you know, open this community up for rickshawalas. And maybe then they won't reject me anymore. Yeah. One day, one day. <laughs> yes, why not? Um, on the topic of uh, communities, and I'll come to you, Purti. Um, uh, Rubina, this one's for you because we know you recently created a community, right? And uh, very lovingly called Fashion at uh, Work. So from simply following subscribers, globally the trend is shifting to creators creating communities, right? How do you see women creators from India catching up with the trend? I think they'll catch up very soon. Because think about it, right? When digital started as a medium, why did influencer marketing pick up so, so much suddenly, right? Uh, I think it's a changing um, pop culture that we are witnessing in the country. Uh, what happened? Okay. That was a bell? Yeah. Oh, okay. wow. So I'm going to make it quick. We have to leave. So, you know... <laughs> All right. Uh, but you know, it's, what I was trying to say is it's a changing pop culture in the country that we are witnessing. So what we saw, um, I think, um, a few years ago, people were tired of say, looking at these large celebrities. And everybody said that I can be a celebrity as well. And let me come on this uh, medium, which is digital, which has uh, democratized uh, this platform where everybody can express themselves, be themselves. And let me start like kind of showcasing my talent, talking about the things that I like, um, and be there, right? And a lot of us, we were just consuming that com content earlier on, and we said like, it's great, you know, this is somebody like me, I identify with her, but she speaks about it, maybe I don't have the courage to talk about it. But as, you know, the, the time has passed on, what we're seeing now is that uh, Aparna, to your point, what you said, we are all content creators. We all have a digital voice in some form or the other, some louder than the others. And I think uh, very, very clearly, everybody's moving to this whole uh, place of a community where people want to talk to each other. They don't want to be told what to do. They want to not just listen in, uh, but they also want to contribute. They want to express their point of view. Sure. So I think everybody's going to get into this whole community system where everybody has an equal platform talking to each other and not like one content creator who's put on a pedestal still much higher than the others. So I think sure. the content creators have to realize that and not make the folly of what their predecessors did by putting the, you know, having that whole diva status. Sure. And um, my belief is the younger lot is far more nimble, like I said, Absolutely. and they will adapt to it. Absolutely. One last question before they ring the bell the second time. Um, Purti, uh, women outnumber men when it comes to the creator economy, right? There are, and again, I'm quoting from reports, there are two women creators for every one male creator. However, yeah. however, we are told there is a gender pay gap that exists. Women creators make much lesser money than male creators. And uh, how do you think we can work towards collectively bridging this gap? So yes, I'm sure Anisha wants to respond too, but Purti, yes. <laughs> Purti. I think you should just put it to everyone. Yes. So, everyone, yes, so Purti, firstly, go first. Um, I think there are certain uh, genres, certain categories, uh, which are predominantly women-owned categories, right? They're dominated by women. It's fashion, beauty, food, uh, parenting, um, and a couple of others, right? They are predominantly uh, uh, run by uh, female uh, and women influencers, creators. Um, I don't think um, that it's so much about uh, women getting paid less than men when it comes to influencer marketing. I think it's about numbers. I think it's about um, I think it's about the ROI. If if your uh, if what you're charging uh, justifies um, uh, the the value that you're providing to the brand, uh, you get the amount that you're asking for. 
I'll give you an example. We manage one of the largest uh, fashion influencers um, uh, that, that India has seen, uh, a female fashion influencer. She charges um, upwards of, um, she charges, I can't give the numbers, but she charges upwards of 10 lakhs, uh, upwards of 10 lakhs for um, a content post that she would put out. But the, but the value she generates for a brand is great. So brands agree to pay her that. At the same time, a male creator who provides much lesser value, uh, the CPV would be uh, far higher than what uh, this female creators would be. Um, he doesn't uh, get paid as much. I'm talking about it from experience. Though at the same time, before others jump in, uh, <laughs> though um, I'll speak about another category. Let's talk about comedy, for example, right? I don't think that's the case in comedy. Uh, one, there are far lesser uh, women uh, comedy creators that the country has. Of course, there's Anisha, there are a bunch of others, uh, um, uh, Sumuki and others um, who are there. Um, here, you will still see the male content creators many, uh, many a times getting paid much more than the female content creators because again, they there it's like a thing because both the both the com both the uh, uh, both men and women are a part of that. So yes, I do think um, women need to be paid as much uh, as men do in 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 creative economy specifically, and it'll be driven only by the value that the influence and the creator generates for a brand. Pretty with all due respect, I strongly disagree with that. I think women uh, generate a lot of ROI. The problem is most of us sitting here, not just women content creators, irrespective of our profession, we are shy to ask for more. Okay, so let's, let's break this. Everyone here in this room, right, you all are agencies, brands and everything, right? See, you guys can make that change. And all the women who got so many awards tonight, right? So I think you guys are the ones who can start this discussion with the brands and tell them that women, female creators, doesn't matter if it's comedy or whatever field it is, they should be paid equal or whatever, not like how we were discussing, they're getting paid lesser. So you guys can make the start. It starts with you guys, all of you guys. So we all, I think, request, let's go, guys, sure. yeah. go home, back to your office and talk to the brands and tell them to pay women as much. And it's, I think it's high time, guys. We're all sure. women, right? We all are getting, like, you all got awards and, you know, it's time that women get equal pay. Who agrees? Yes or no? Yeah, yeah, we all do. Yes? We all do. Purti, would you like to, uh, Nikita, would you like to chip in? Yeah. I have a completely different point of view. Yeah. I find, let's keep comedy separate because when it comes to comedy, like you rightly said, the representation of women stand-up comics is extremely low. Yeah. So there isn't enough data to analyze to see if the pay is right or wrong. But having said that, we have standard, I mean, within our industries, everybody knows everyone has standardized rate cards according to CPV and ROI and numbers and all of that. Um, when it comes to brands paying, if you see the kind of brands that are investing into, women influencers are usually makeup, beauty, fitness, things like that, who have much smaller budgets, which is now increasing with big players like your Mintra and your Nika, who have the spending abilities, versus earlier there weren't those many brands who could spend. When it comes to men, now the highest spenders are your automobile, alcohol brands, these are the brands that have a bigger TG of men. So that's when they go automatically to male creators who have that different demographic. So with the rise of newer industries opening up and more brands realizing that we need to spend on creator economy, I feel like that budget will also increase. Sure. And it depends on industry to industry. Sure, sure. Mike, are you feeling excluded? <laughs> I think a lot of it was covered. I, I was just going to say, I mean, again, from personal experience, I, I think I agree that, yes, you do have to ask for it. And I think also, yes, that if the engagement is, uh, is there, then brands will pay. But I agree with how you address the question is that at the end of the day, it comes down to the brand. You don't set the prices, right? Anyone that here that's represented talent, female talent, it's not like we're not asking and not trying to push the best for our clients. We, we do the asking, the, so there's the, no problem the, of asking. The pushback, which, which I have heard many times from the marketing side, from the marketer side is, no, we don't think she's worth that much. What about this one? So yes, I have heard that. So at the end of the day, where the financial decisions, where the purse strings 
lie is where I think equality still needs to be pushed a little bit. But then, hell yeah, ask for it and push for it. And when you know that you, you know, I'm speaking with Malini, we've turned down many more offers than we've accepted because the weren't offering the right value. We, we could have taken it, but you decide your value and then you just stand up for it. Oh, I just want to add one last thing since um, uh, everyone shared their point of view. <laughs> One, I completely agree I we should be asking for it. Yes. For me, according to me, it's very simple. For, for influencer marketing, for creator economy, it is as simple as ROI. It's lesser the pay parity. It's far better as compared to other industries. I acknowledge the fact that it's there, right? The fact is it's far lesser and it's far more value driven. Um, so I rest my point with that. And I talk out of experience, we manage a lot of content creators, male, female, we manage a lot of celebrities, male, female. I know for a fact that some, uh, a, one of the largest Bollywood actresses, she does get paid more than a lot of other men actors out there, right? And so is the case for some female creators. So, yeah. Also, can I make one last point? Yes. <laughs> Just on the this, a lot of the this decisions the to spend itself. money so is hardly done interest. ever by a human being. It is done by a tool on most cases. Brands and agencies have a tool that gives them a list purely like Purti said on numbers. If the tool tells you spend on these people and spend X amount, they will spend on X amount. It's hardly ever this is a woman so I'm going to spend less on this person. Yeah. And, that's the, and so that's only going to grow. I mean every agency and brand will be using a tool going sure. forward. Sure. Okay. So maybe maybe we'll we'll blame it all on the tools, but yes, <laughs> that's how we'll address uh, uh, this question. Does the audience have any interesting questions? I think we have time for one question. Come on, the backbenchers definitely have a lot of questions. The backbenchers, do you have any questions? Yes. So. The women's uh, Premier League is getting popular. Right now it's on and there's a lot of uh, eyeballs, people looking at the matches, etc. How is it going to help uh, the female brands and what do you think is social media going to play uh, as a role in making this women's uh, Premier League as popular as the IPL into a big billion dollar industry? So, um, that's a very interesting point because the women's Premier League has actually almost at par with men's when it comes to the kind of teams that have been sold and the number the number of dollars that have been spent on players, which automatically means that the brands are going to be investing way more when it comes to all of the events. So there's already been a lot of chatter in the market when it comes to creating content around women's Premier League. It's not just the WPL, it's also the Women's World Cup next year. Um, which has caused, um, started a lot of momentum where brands have started reaching out to us and our players on what are the IPs that we can build to get more women onto the platform. And that's something that we're actively working on, which I'm sure everyone is as well. I would just quickly say that the, the best way to ensure the success is for women and men to watch it and support it. Right? At the end of the day, we just keep talking about eyeballs, metrics, it's super entertaining. It's it's amazing skill. People have to watch it. So if you're trying to support women's sports, watch women's sports. So I'll just quickly add something here. Um, the hope is that uh, WPL will be as big as IPL, men's IPL. Um, I think it will start slowly. Um, the kind of monies that have been invested into WPL are far less as compared to men's IPL, even when it started many years ago. Uh, the kind of marketing spends that are being put into WPL, into promoting WPL, are fa it's a fraction. It's a fraction of what's spent on men's IPL. So uh, it will take a while. Um, the fact is, and this is according to certain marketeers that, um, uh, and we've been working on uh, IPL fairly closely. So according to certain marketeers, women's IPL will break even far quicker than men's IPL would. One, due to the fact that of course the investments are lesser, but at the same time, marketeers are 
looking to pump in a lot of money behind uh, uh, women's sports now. It's not like it was even five or eight, eight years back, right? So it'll take a while, but yay, cheers for uh, WPL happening. Thank you so much. Uh, you guys have been a lovely audience. I can't say so much about the back benchers, they've always been talking, but at least all the front benchers have been a wonderful audience. Um, Anisha, my favorite rickshaw wali, I'll still keep calling you rickshaw wali because I've been a fan from that time. Mike, for you know, truly representing, uh, diversity. yes, diversity. Uh, Nikita, yes, great strong points of view, but all points very well taken. And, Collectively, we all need to work together so that, you know, the vision we have for a better future for all women, right? Women truly for women. Women empowering women all comes true. Purti, uh, yes, uh, with celebrities do tell us during the break who that highest paid celebrity <laughs> is. We all like some goss, don't we? And uh, multitasking, uh, Mommy, Rubina, thank you so much for making it. We, we loved what you shared with us. Thank you so much, everyone. You've been a lovely audience. Thank you.